Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and this was going to be my weekly vault opening video, but Blizzard employees are currently on a walkout, so I'm not going to make a World of Warcraft video while that is going on. So instead I figured I'd use this video to uh, talk about exactly what is happening over at Blizzard Entertainment right now, because it's kind of past, like, normal evil, right? Smart corporate evil, and it's turned into just, like, comic book villain stupid evil i don't know okay so let, let's go through what's what's been going on what's come out in the last little bit so the the thing that sparked all of this today has been this article that's come out from the wall street journal although there's now some speculation that something that happened yesterday was actually linked to this as well which is yesterday blizzard gave all of their employees uh paid time off over thanksgiving extra paid time off over thanksgiving next week uh which now some suspect is because they knew this article was coming and we're trying to, to pre-build some good faith. Um, okay, so this article by the Wall Street Journal has several revelations in it. One of them is regarding Jen O'Neill's departure from the Blizzard leadership, which was when J. Allen Brock ste stepped down at the start of the scandal, uh, they appointed Jen O'Neill and Mikey Barra to be co-leads at Blizzard. But then recently, Jen O'Neill left, sort of a kind of boilerplate uh, resignation thing message was posted. Um, but now there's, in this article, uh, we've learned that there's an email she sent to a member of Activision's legal team where she professed a lack of faith in their leadership, saying it was clear the company would never prioritize our people the right way. Some evidence for this. In the email, she'd been sexually harassed earlier in her, her career at Activision. Um, so even even though if you say, all right, they, they've tried to turn this around, right? She was paid less than her male counterpart at the helm of Blizzard. So they they elevated these two people to be co-leads in the wake of a, a sexual harassment scandal. And they paid the, the woman less than the man. Just, I mean, it's it's mind-bogglingly stupid and toned down. I mean, it's not just evil. It's also stupid is the, is the crazy part here, which... Um, and then, yeah, I've been tokenized, marginalized, and discriminated against, wrote Miss O'Neill, who's Asian-American and gay. Um, and yeah, she left then a little while ago, again, with very little of this was public at the time, but it's been broken in this Wall Street Journal article. Some other stuff, though, in this uh, article, which is, I mean, kind of horrifying. Uh, Kotick intervenes to save executives. So this is back in 2017. Uh, female employee accused Dan Bunting then co-head of Activision's Treyarch Studio, the ones who make the bad Call of Duty games, right? Every other Call of Duty being the bad one, uh, of sexually harassing her after a night of drinking. The journal recounts this story, asserting that although an internal investigation conducted in 2019 recommended that Bunting be fired, Kotick personally intervened to keep the executive on board. So an internal investigation, one of those things that almost always comes up saying, oh, you know, we can't substantiate every anything, we recommend... Uh, slap on the wrist, administrative leave, whatever, those sorts of things. That internal investigation recommended that the executive in question be fired. Let's not overstate that that's just such a an anomalous case already. Uh, usually for an internal investigation to recommend somebody in a position of power like that to be fired, their conduct has to be way over the line, right? Way past that sort of gray area where usually these are clawless investigations that don't actually come to recommend anything. Kotick then personally intervened to keep the executive on board, right? Uh, Human Resources Department and other supervisors launched the investigation, recommended to be fired. Mr. Kotick intervened to help him, or to keep him, these people said. Um, he was given counseling and allowed to remain at the company. So, again, this is a case of, like, I don't know. The, the, this, this, this sort of action from Bobby Kotick, it... it it brings us to the point where if you're the board of directors and you see this, like it's even if your goal is to be an evil company now that, you know, just values profits over people. At this point, this 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 is just such a, a comic book villain level of of like, you know, it's not even oh our investigation didn't reveal anything, so we had to keep him along, right? Innocent until proven guilty, right? Like those sorts of things. Um, it's it's just like actively being horrible. And then also there's this story which uh, had already, there had already been, I already knew about this one actually, uh, although the story was given little attention at the time. So in 2007, I guess in 2006, one of his assistants complained that he, this is Bobby Kotick, uh, one of his assistants complained that he harassed her. 
including by threatening in a voicemail to have her killed, according to people familiar with the matter. He settled the matter, matter out of court, uh, and he quickly apologized 16 years ago for the obviously hyperbolic and inappropriate voicemail. So this is the sort of thing where, you know, okay, if, if this was one incident that somebody had 16 years ago, uh, and, you know, it's a voicemail where they threaten to have somebody killed, you'd be like, oh, that's really bad. But then if they had, you know, not had anything else bad happen since then, and they, they had clearly demonstrated that they were a changed person, that they, they, and in fact that they just, that, that was, you know, an outlier type situation, then okay, that's one thing. But this is the sort of thing that sets the, the context for then when you have all this other stuff about him. So what's happened as a result of this? ABK workers, a better ABK. It's not quite a union, although it's sort of trying to be one. Although Blizzard has hired a company that does a really good job of stopping unions from forming, a company called Wilmer Hale, a law firm with a reputation for union busting where I believe game developer Ian Hazacostas used to work, although I'm actually not 100% sure on that one. Um, but yeah, so this, a better ABK. Uh, we've instituted our own zero tolerance policy. We will not be silenced until Bobby Kotick has been replaced as CEO and continue to hold our original demand for a third party review by an employee chosen source rather than, you know, the board choosing its own investigators. Um, we are staging a walkout today. We welcome you to join us. That's uh, what is happening now. That's where Blizzard employees, come. I mean, obviously a lot of them are working remotely, but digitally walking out, right? Not, not doing work on the game right now. Um, and yeah, okay, so then what happened here? Bobby Kotick has released a heartfelt video um, about how, how much he cares and stuff. And the board of directors is behind him. The Activision Blizzard board remains committed to the goal of making Activision Blizzard the most welcoming and inclusive company in the industry. Under Bobby Kotick's leadership, the company is already implementing industry-leading changes, including a zero-tolerance harassment policy and a policy of paying our woman co-lead uh, less than the, the man co-lead we put up until she resigns. A dedication to achieving significant increases to the percentages of women and non-binary people in our workplace, and significant internal and external investments to accelerate opportunities for diverse talent. The board remains confident that Bobby Kotick appropriately addressed workplace issues brought to his attention. The goals we have set to ourselves are both critical and ambitious, remains confident in his leadership commitment and ability to achieve these goals. The board remains confident that Bobby Kotick appropriately addressed workplace issues brought to his attention, right? When the, uh, when the investigators came and told him to fire the executive who'd been sexually harassing people, they were, they were, the board is confident that his decision to veto that and keep him, keep him around was a good one. Anyways, this is the thing where it's just like, if the board is trying to run a company where they don't actually have to, like, th this is the sort of thing that's just, it's so stupid, right? Like, it's like they, they've been doing, you know, the smart and evil things, right? Like, put brushing things under the rug for so long that now they run into the situation where the smart thing is actually also the right thing to do, which is fire Bobby Kotick, right? And they just, like, they can't do it. They can't bring themselves to uh, doing the right thing because it also happens to be the smart thing, right? They're like, oh, man, I we're, we would rather be evil than smart. And so that's what they're doing here, and... It's awful. That's what's going on at Blizzard today. That's why there's no weekly vault video. Uh, I've pre-recorded a couple other WoW videos come out probably over the next couple days, or maybe I'll delay them. We'll see what exactly the employees at Blizzard want to do, whether their walkout continues. So stay tuned for that. I'm not going to stream World of Warcraft today either. Um, might stream something else. I don't know. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.